Hello, hello. You're listening to The Leadership Woman with me, Jill Savile. And this morning, it is just me and me. So I hope that's okay with everybody. I, well, this podcast has been a little bit hit and miss recently, for that I apologise. And I'm going to explain a little bit about what on earth is going on in my life at the moment. And the other thing I want to say before we begin is, uh, the sound is not as I would wish this morning. My favourite microphone um, has fallen to pieces. It's held together with a a wing and a prayer. It's all very Heath Robinson this morning. But I'm not going to let that stop me because there's some important things that I'm thinking at the moment that I believe will be useful to some of you. Even if it's only useful to one of you, then it will have been worth my while uh, doing this podcast today. What's happening at the moment then? Um, They say that the most stressful things in life are things like moving house, separation, um, uh, marriage, death, all all of these big things in life. And uh, there's quite a few of those bumping up at the moment. I am trying to move house. So we've sold this one. 29th of July, we leave. (laughs) That night, we're in a hotel. Then for the next two weeks, we're in some kind of uh, chambre d'hôte, B&B. And then we're two weeks in England, and then we come back. And on the 1st of September, we move into another house in France and take our stuff out of storage. So ah, the chances of me ending up with the right things in the right place at the right time are between slim and none, I would say. But I'm not going to let that worry me at the moment. If you could see what I'm surrounded by, it's packing cases and things that that just need thinking about. Do I want to keep it? Do I want to throw it away? And so in this process of deciding what do I want to keep, I've come across this book. And it's the kind of book that clearly I saw at an airport or, or a bookshop or something like that. And it's called 50 Self-Help Classics, published in 2003 by Tom Butler Bowden. And what he decided to do was to read an awful lot of books about self-help and put what he felt were the top 50 into a book. So this has been sitting on my shelf for quite a while. And I picked it up this morning and had a look, and it gave me an idea, like things <laughs> things do, just come to us, don't they? It gave me an idea for a series of podcasts, in fact, under the umbrella of uh, I've found a gold mine, because I do believe that this book is a gold mine. He begins with two quotes, one by a guy called William James, 1842 to 1910, So this must be very early 20th century. The greatest discovery of my generation is that a human being can alter his life by altering his attitudes. And then a more up-to-date one by Martin Seligman, very often called the founder of the positive psychology. Habits of thinking need not be for us. One of the most significant findings in psychology in the last 20 years is that individuals can choose the way they think. Uh, He wrote that in the book Learned Optimism. One common thread in all of these 50 examples, these books that he's read, and there are short summaries of each one of them, the common thread is the refusal to accept common unhappiness or quiet desperation. Now think about that. Refusal to accept common unhappiness or quiet desperation. And I I think self-help books have a really bad 
depressed. It seems to indicate that we have a problem. And I suppose usually we turn to something like this for when we do have a problem. But these books that he selected, he says they're common because it's all about possibility. It's not necessarily about problems, but if we can really control, alter the way that we think, then we have this idea of limitless thinking. And the first book apparently entitled Self Help was in 1859 by a guy called Samuel Smiles. <laughs> I really like that name, Samuel Smiles, who was a political reformer, apparently. But he learned over his life that the real revolution in, was in people's heads. So you can see the common theme here. And I'm really hoping that you're going to enjoy this series of podcasts. Because it's so important that we understand that we can change how we think. We can move that dial, that sliding scale. We can move it more towards optimism than pessimism if we just work at controlling our thoughts. And many years ago, nearly 20 years ago now, when I was sat at my desk, in London, in the civil service, thinking, what, what can I do when I leave the civil service? I think I can coach. What will I call it? And the very first title I came up with was Unlocking Possibilities. And I think that that theme has stayed with me over these decades, that I am trying to unlock possibilities within you by changing the way that we think. So I'm going to leave you with that thought. I'm going to select a book for next time. Also, I do have an interview with Ed DaCosta that he gave me so much of his time uh, that it will take me quite a while to edit it, but there are such a lot of themes there and I want to do him justice. So I, I hope you enjoy today. I hope you can go and think about if you had limitless thoughts, limitless possibilities, what would you do with them? And how can you become a realistic optimist? Somebody that accepts that challenges are real, but in fact, we need to move on. At some point, we need to move on and find the positive, the gifts in everything that comes our way. So. Thank you for listening. I hope that you're all well. And I'll go back to my packing. <laughs>